Don't say, I don't enjoy that in the area. I'm not interested. No, go and learn. I've had to go to go attend courses, courses in terms of sex schools to help me to be able to know this. And today, to the glory of God, we are enjoying ourselves. What do you mean? We are enjoying ourselves. <laughs> All right. Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel, Relationship and Health Matters with Dudu Showa. I am Dr. Blessing Nekundayo, also known as Dudu Showa. I'm a relationship educator and a mental health practitioner based in New Zealand. If you're watching my YouTube channel for the first time, thank you so much for tuning in. Please do subscribe. Hit that subscribe button right away so that you don't miss any further episode, okay? It's always good to have you here if you've been watching for a while now. God bless you and please if you've been watching and you're yet to subscribe, what are you waiting for? <laughs> please hit that subscribe button right away so you get notifications whenever I do upload a new video. Thank you and God bless you. I've got a really interesting topic today and uh, many of you who have been following me would be already aware that my husband and I celebrated you know, our wedding anniversary some days ago, okay, we celebrated our nine years wedding anniversary, guys. Can you believe? So I cannot believe I've been with this man, married to this man for nine years, and I've known him, we've been friends now for about 15 years. Oh my god, <laughs> I cannot believe this. But I want to give all the glory to God for keeping us and preserving our lives and also our marriage, especially. Today, the topic I'll be um, sharing with you today is titled Nine Lessons from My Nine Years of Marriage. Yes, I've learned a lot of lessons and this nine lessons is just like a tip of the ice or tips of the iceberg if there's anything like that. Right, I've learned a lot of lessons but I think some nine important lessons I'd like to share with you today are things that um, I believe that you're going to benefit from. You're also going to learn from whether or not you're married okay if you're single and you're watching this you would learn from it and if you are married also I'm sure that you will learn a thing or two okay my marriage is not perfect we are still a work in progress and we're still learning I've had to learn and learn and we learn a lot of things in my marriage and I'll be sharing this with you right away so keep watching right so um number one lesson is that conflict is inevitable in marriage yes i have learned that conflict is inevitable in marriage see when i first of all got married and my husband and i began to have like really intense you know arguments <laughs> i was like wait what is going on here you know it was it was really tough because i had left me you know nigeria at the time to, to be with him in new zealand and i felt really quite isolated and i was like what's going on i thought something was not right <laughs> with this marriage you know um we had lots of differences um uh, and i began to wonder god is this the man that you told me to marry like hey <laughs> and i'm sure that he also was thinking the same way you know we, we our, our differences became really really glaring you know because we had never lived together um and before that was the first time you know getting married was the first time we actually be living together you know and um He's a really loud person, you know, his voice is loud. And any smile, like, they calm down. Even when we are, you know, talking, he begins to raise his voice. I'm like, you're shouting? Like, I'm not shouting, I'm just talking. I'm like, you're shouting. <laughs> you know, he, we, we're so different like that. And you know, lo lots of other differences, you know, the way we communicated was a major issue. But we're learning and we're still learning. And we have learned over time, you know, how to balance our differences, how to appreciate our differences, how to resolve our conflicts and God is still helping us. Okay, so just in case you're wondering, you know, the conflicts in your in your home, in your marriage and you're wondering, ah, we shouldn't have any problem in marriage. See, it is not unusual. Both of you are from different backgrounds, different ideologies, different exposures, different experiences and so you both coming together, it will take time for you to actually blend and understand there will be some friction, you know, so yeah it will take time today nine years nine years um married and we want to give god all the glory so months back i was telling my husband dear you know we have not had any major misunderstanding in the last one year i'm like yes but we've had many there were times we had you know big big issues every single day with malice but god has been faithful god has been faithful um number two because i don't have much time number two is that 
um, there will be storms in your marriage, okay? And that because God, you know, because, you know, you've heard from God doesn't exclude, you know, your marriage from storms, you know. I came into marriage having that understanding or that ideology that, oh, God has spoken to me about my husband. Yes, so it's going to be peaceful. It's going to be a jolly ride. Hmm, it's a lie. <laughs> Remember that even Jesus that was in the boat, that storm came. He, the, the storm that Jesus was in, I mean, the boat that Jesus was in, almost capsided. Like seriously, how can storm come and <laughs> almost need Jesus to capsize? Like what is the storm looking for in a boat that Jesus is God, God Himself is in? So marriage can your marriage will have storms, okay? Our storms came in different forms. Okay? For example, I realized that I could not actually work. You know, my plans didn't my plans didn't go or things didn't go as planned for me. So to my career, and that was really challenging. That was frustrated i was angry that was that was another storm for us in our marriage you know, there was a point in our lives where i you know we were separated you know because of career also you know i, I was in one country I was in another country you know and that you know caused even more storms in our marriage but god god was faithful god preserved us god kept us you know and we've gone through different levels different types of storms in our marriage so um i want to encourage someone if you're going through storm in your marriage you know god is always the anchor god is always an anchor if you've got an anchor you you would not capsize that marriage would not capsize always don't forget to call on god jesus you are the reason why <laughs> i am here save me help me and i remember what helped me particularly is because of the word that i heard from god before i married my husband i continue to hold on to that word you know and god has been seen or trying to see seen or should all right so the fourth thing you know is, is is that every marriage is unique and you should not compare your marriage to somebody else's marriage hmm. see it's so easy for us to compare you see that guy on social media how he's treating his wife how he's you know pouring out all the love how he's been affectionate how how this woman and, the, and her husband are doing pda like hey ah, why is my husband not like this person why is my husband like this person ah, ah, why, is, why is this woman so slim and nice and my wife is on the big side can't she go and lose uh, if you are comparing your wife to another woman's another man's wife you're comparing your husband to another another, another, another woman's husband and you want your husband to have that kind of you know you, you, pick, you picture your husband to be like that and because it's not like that you, you begin to be resentful towards your husband or you begin to be resentful towards your wife or you begin you know you you lose your joy lose your joy in that marriage stop comparing your marriage to somebody else see every marriage is unique just like how the individuals in that marriage they are unique so please stop comparing comparison is this is is, is a killer of joy in marriage okay it makes you to lose focus of of your of your marriage and lose focus of your husband or your or your wife and lose focus of somebody else, else else entirely it is not healthy for your marriage okay forget about what you see on social media focus on your marriage water your own garden and you'll see how it's going to flourish all right so that's number three okay so number four is that never say never to thought parties see I, before i go into marriage i used to be of the opinion that hey nobody must know about what is going on in my marriage okay? it's me and my husband my husband and i so if, if, if any problem is happening we're going to solve it together and everything and i went on and on about that but we experienced times now in the, there was one time in my life it was really tough it was extremely turbulent you know and we had to call a third party to come and help us resolve this turbulence that we had in marriage and thank god that we did because i don't know what would have happened to us honestly you know so when i when i say never say never about you know it's about fourth parties and marriage it's important that you are careful about the kind of third parties that you would bring to your marriage when you have issues all right make sure there are people who are neutral so when you talk when i talk about thought parties don't go and bring your parents because your parents cannot help you but they will add more problem whatever your parents are going to be biased they will they will, they will support you now of course and then they will be <laughs> against your of your spouse no that's not what you want you want someone who will be neutral who will tell you the truth the truth that you may not want to hear okay find someone who is godly that will give you godly counsel don't go and meet your friends that will be biased against you people that don't, don't that will, will give you wrong counsel what people what what people of the world do okay the counsel must be based on the word of god okay find people who if, you, if possible find people who are professionals okay who actually know what they are talking about when it comes to marriage right it's an important do not die in silence don't don't, don't be in a situation where your marriage is going through tough tough times 
you know and you keep quiet you are burning in it there is nobody to talk to no please speak out speak up before your marriage ends up in a divorce all right so that's number what number is that again that's number four <laughs> right number five is don't have children until you are emotionally physically and financially ready for them oh my goodness parenting is a full-time job okay i had or we had a uh at first, even I was not ready. <laughs> I was not ready for kids at the time I had, I, you know, we had our first child. I was like, oh my God, this baby is here. I'm grateful for the baby today. I'm grateful because baby came at the right time. But at the time, I was not ready, you know. Um, it's important that you're emotionally ready for those kids when they come. Okay, so get, you know, if you need to be on contraception, do it. You know, so that you can actually plan your time, plan your life and get yourself organized. You need to be financially also ready, also mentally ready. <laughs> it's not easy to raise kids. Kids are expensive, okay? Diapers, childcare, school fees. Talk about it, okay? And you need to also be physically and emotionally present for them. So don't give birth to kids that you will not be ready. You're not ready to actually look after. Okay? Because parenting is a lot of work. It is possible, but you also need to be present in their growing up. I want to thank God for my husband and I. God has been really, really helping us to raise our kids. And you know, children are a blessing from God. If you are watching me and you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, it's my prayer that God will grant your heart desire speedily in the name of Jesus. And God will perfect all that concerns you and you will testify very soon in the name of Jesus. So my point today is do not have kids until you are ready to look after them. Okay, these children need you to be there for them as parents right um number six is your spouse is not responsible for your happiness mm. i can say that over and over and over again see when i got married i thought that my husband was the one that was responsible to make me happy to make me happy like oh yes you must make me happy you must do this you must do that you must motivate me you must encourage me you must i put all the responsibility on him see that is too much responsibility to put on a human being it is important that you, you bring your own joy be joyful and bring the joy <laughs> to the marriage because if you have if you if, if you if your your if your joy tank is empty and you bring that to the marriage see don't expect your spouse to fill that tank for you it's not gonna happen okay you will just be upset you'll be miserable you'll be angry you'll be frustrated in that marriage because nobody has responsibility to make you happy yes so your husband or your wife is not does not have that responsibility to make you happy you are the one that's supposed to make, make sure that you are happy if they're able to make you happy great that is an additional in fact it means that your cup is overflowing your joy is overflowing right but if they do not please Get yourself together, right? And make yourself happy. If you need to go for a massage, go for a massage. If you need to go for a course that would, you know, maybe improve your self-esteem and make you feel fulfilled, do it. But do not put the responsibility on your spouse that they have to be the ones to make you happy, or else you cannot be happy in this life. No, 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 no. Okay. Please, it's important that you are joyful. Thank God that God taught me a lesson because I was, I was, I was, I was frustrated at the point. So I wasn't getting the vibe out. I, 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 I thought in my head, I expected in my head that I should get from my husband. But it was too much expectation, too much pressure that I was putting on him. But when I got my deliverance, oh my goodness, <laughs> I was set free. And you still can be set free if you're still putting that response into your, in your spouse. Please do not. Okay? Um, the seventh thing, number seven, is that marriage does not succeed on autopilot. Hmm. Marriage does not succeed on autopilot. Some, you know, at the point when when I started, uh, when I got into marriage, I thought, yes, we have arrived. Just relax. After all, I used to see that oh, people always, you know, enjoy their marriage. Once they marry, like this, pictures, relaxation, go on holidays, you know, breakfast in bed, and all of those things. And kids come and you just have a peaceful home and no problem. I expected that the marriage just it just flourish. No, <laughs> if you are simple and you're watching it, no. It doesn't succeed on autopilot. There is work to be done in marriage. You gotta pick up your holes, pick up your cutlass, pick up everything and begin to work. You gotta work. You've got to be intentional about your marriage because that's the only way it can succeed. The both of you have to be intentional about it. You have to be ready to work hard for your marriage to succeed. Okay, for us, 
you know, there's some there are a few things that we have done in terms of how we have been intentional. So we ensure that we go on dates regularly. Sometimes I take decide to take my husband out. Yes, don't wait for your husband to take you out before you can take him out. Who said that? It's only husbands are all guys and take their wives out. Why you can take your husband out too? So sometimes I take my husband out and sometimes he also takes me out spontaneously. You've got to be intentional about, you know, your your your, your love, like your marriage. You know, for us, we've also been intentional by ensuring that twice in a week, call it date night, okay? Twice in a week, we've chosen two days and we have the time, fixed time. No matter what is happening, if we are, <laughs> unless I'm, you know, possibly at work or he has traveled, but if we are together on the same at, at, on those days, we are having date night, okay? And it's shut, it's shut down phones, nothing, no communication, nothing is going to you know distract us. You've got to be intentional about it, okay? Be intentional about your life, about everything that has to do with your because there's so many distractions. Parents, job, your family, extended family, every so many things you know that are distracting marriages today and are making husband and wives to draw apart, you know, draw away from each other. So please be intentional, intentional to speak the love language of your spouse. Because you know that's how you fall in love in the first place, isn't it? Yes. So please continue to be intentional, right? Um. The other thing, or number eight, is sexual pleasure and you know and satisfaction requires communication. Yes. Sexual pleasure and you know um, satisfaction requires communication. It is important that you communicate a lot if you want to enjoy your sex life. For us, it was very challenging as a past money for me. It was extremely challenging at the beginning because I came into marriage as a movie, it's like N O V I C. I had no idea, you know. Um, well, a bit of things, but I, I mean, I was a virgin, you know, and I was very, very ignorant be honest at the time um and unfortunately also i didn't learn things even though i sort of we, we talked about sexual compatibility at the beginning and you know before we got married i i knew what what my husband was expecting for i don't know why i didn't actually you know read a bit more about these things and how to actually improve my knowledge you know but and so it was it was it was a struggle at the beginning and to the point where i was feeling like uh, it was especially about this in the whole sex in fact because I, I wasn't enjoying it you know but it's but over time you know as, as we you know began to talk about it as we began to communicate to understand each other's body and things like that you know and to begin to actually be honest with each other about how we felt you know how we felt with you know what was going on and you know how we how we how we, how we felt in terms of you know our, our, our emotions you know for the connection and the pleasure we're honest about our satisfaction you know it was it was it began to change you know and we began to enjoy you know beautiful beautiful sex because sex is a gift from god and so please communicate do not do not hide your feelings it's important that you know if you're the one that has been experienced in that relationship you know before you got into marriage don't criticize don't criticize your spouse don't say uh, you don't even make it out. no no don't criticize you know comp- help help your spouse help that spouse and you who may not be there yet it's important that you are not fixed or fixed-minded or you know you, 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 you know you know rigid in your thinking you are willing to actually open up acknowledge that you don't know and be ready to know <laughs> or else you continue to be frustrated in that marriage and you frustrate the other person okay because sex is very important in terms of intimacy sexual intimacy is important it wants a marriage so please do not deny your spouse don't say i don't enjoy that in the area i'm not interested no go and learn up how to go to go attend courses Courses in terms of sex schools to help me to be able to understand today to the glory of God. We are enjoying ourselves. What do you mean? We are enjoying ourselves. <laughs> All right, we don't live this life twice. Okay, we live it only once. So enjoy sexual intimacy in marriage. Okay, I cannot overemphasize this. Number nine, marriage is sweet when you're married to the right person. That's the ninth lesson and the last lesson. Marriage is sweet when you're married to the right person. So please, singles. Do not marry wrong. Hmm. Do not marry wrong. I mean, you not marry wrong in the name of Jesus. Don't say it's only love that matters. Hey, if you marry the wrong person and you say it's only love that matters, you realize that it's not only love that matters. So it's not only love that matters. So think about your life much more than those emotions that you, the butterflies that you are, you are feeling in your tummy right now. Because those butterflies only matter time they will go away. Okay? And then you face reality. <laughs> it's that reality that keeps the marriage going. 
right so please okay marry the right person because that's the only way that marriage can su- succeed go beyond that going to your compatibility compatibility in every area of your life spiritually in terms of your values in terms of your purpose marry somebody who is compatible for your purpose and that's why i always tell people marry know your purpose before you, you discover your purpose for life before you discover your partner for life because it's very very important today to the glory of god my husband and I enjoying each other. You know, I'm enjoying my marriage. I'm not saying it's, 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 it has its own challenges, you know, but it's beautiful. It's purposeful. It's wonderful. And both of us are fighting together for the marriage, the glory of God. So please marry right. Marry right. And if you're married and you feel like you, maybe you made a mistake, you married the wrong person, it is not true. It is, it is, it is, it is, it, don't, don't, I would encourage you not to begin to think it's time to get out. No, you can begin to pray about it. Get help. Get counseling. You know, speak to people about people that can help you know your marriage because you know no matter how bad things are, if, if you are willing to make it work and the other person too is willing to make it work, that marriage can bounce back again to the glory of God. Amen. Somebody, All right? If you have enjoyed this, I'm gonna stop here. Okay. If you have enjoyed this episode, please let me know. If you have any questions. Let us know in the comment section so that I can, let me know in the comment section so that I can attend to your questions. I've learned this nine lessons, you know, in my marriage. Do you want to share your stuff? Please, you can feel, you know, feel free to add your stuff in the comment section. And I'm hoping and trusting by God's grace, I'll be back here again this time next year to celebrate 10 years and to share the 10 lessons with you. Something is happening next year. <laughs> secret still okay all right so thank you so much for watching really appreciate you if you haven't subscribed yet please click that subscribe button right away thank you and god bless you see you next time bye